Welcome to Y-Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada. It was originally part of the University of Toronto's Faculty of Astronomy, and now it's reduced to us giving these cheesy radio lectures. This is Lesson 18 of our Canadian Amateur Radio Training. We're covering frequencies, propagation, and atmosphere. It's an easier section. Um, not that easy. Go for 85, 90% on the quiz. So how can radio possibly work? We're able with ham radio on HF frequencies to transmit around the world. But radio signals don't go through the earth. And ham operators can communicate with other hams on the other side. Now it's not satellite because ham radio existed long before communication satellites. So how can this possibly work? Well, we have different frequencies for different needs. Different radio frequencies exhibit different behavior. Uh, you know, think about satellite TV. It has to have an antenna outside, but your regular TV and your radio, they work fine inside. Same with your cell phone. The frequencies used by satellite TV do not go through walls. So there's a lot of different characteristics. when We've been talking about megahertz and gigahertz. When we get up to terahertz, trillions of waves per second, those radio frequencies, we see them as light. We have radio receivers for them. They're inside our eyeballs. Gigahertz, that's uh, where microwaves are. Your microwave oven is about 2.4 gigahertz, and so are your uh, RC devices and your cordless phones. You can use them for communications and for cooking. Down at the kilohertz, we have AM radio. And in the high megahertz, we've got FM radio and TV on VHF and UHF. And also ham re repeaters in those frequencies as well. But the low megahertz is where the HF communication happens, where we're able to get signals around the world. So there are general propagation rules. Lower frequencies travel farther because they require less energy. So for the same amount of energy, you'll get more distance. And here's something cool. They can bounce off the Earth, and they can bounce off components of the upper atmosphere to go farther. And they'll even go around the world with multiple bounces, up to the atmosphere, down to Earth, back up, back down. Now, that gets a lot of distance. Then we're talking about consumer radio and TV. Uh, VHF and UHF, their range is the local city, usually no more than 100 kilometers. That's why separate cities can each have their own channel 5, because it dissipates and doesn't go far enough to interfere with the next city. And then our regulators, of course, will ensure that uh, any frequencies they allocate for local TV stations, uh, if there is a risk of interference from two local cities, that they give them different channels. Another thing you might notice, if you have an old AM radio and you're twiddling with it at night, you can pick up some distance, some signals pretty far away because there are some atmospheric conditions that will help propagate AM signals. So the progression of propagation for distance. Our higher frequencies, UHF, VHF, they're usually limited to about 100 kilometers. You know, that's considered line of sight. Then at some lower frequencies, we've got an effect called ground wave propagation. So it's a limited amount of bounce off the Earth, but not the sky. And you'll get to about 200 kilometers with that. Sky wave propagation, that's where we're bouncing off the ionosphere, and often off the Earth too, and back up and down, as we said. Uh, and it's bouncing off the higher portion of the atmosphere. And the higher portion of the atmosphere bounces off, the more distance between each bounce. So we can actually get 4,000 kilometers on a single bounce. That's not unusual. So let's talk some more about sky wave and ionospheric wave. So we have charged particles in the atmosphere that create their own magnetic field. And that's generated by charged particles from the sun. We call that the solar wind. And uh, most of that is in the UV, the ultraviolet range. 
Yeah, that's the same stuff that gives you sunburn. But if it's strong enough, it's like a wall for radio signals. If those signals are at the right frequency. And by a wall, we're talking about the signals bouncing off the wall. So it's electrical charges. Think ions for ionosphere. And since it's from the sun, it'll vary with the sun. So the ionosphere charges up during the daytime as the sun's pounding on the planet and it dissipates again overnight. So it's strongest when the sun is strongest at midday, and then it's weakest at dawn after it's been dissipating all night. Now, atmospheric density matters. How thick is the atmosphere? And the atmosphere is thinner the higher you go. So the layers we have closer to the Earth, we have the D layer, then the E layer, then F1 and F2, and they all react to different frequencies. So with more charged particles, or more particles in general, the lower areas have a higher density, and they'll hold more charge. The farthest regions, F1 and F2, really can't hold much, so they're only active during the daytime. Now again, some more about those ionospheric regions. So D is closest to the Earth. Okay, you remember that, the letter D. Or D is good for a thousand D at the end kilometers when it's not dead in daytime. F regions, F for farthest, F1 and F2. And an F bounce can go for 4,000 kilometers. So remember that, the letter F, farthest, F1, F2, 4,000 kilometer bounces. And the E is in between. So how far it can go is sort of between the other two. We get 2,000 kilometers between the other two. And E affects 6 meters. 6 meters is a more popular band these days. And we'll have a couple of other questions on that in the test. Now the troposphere is below the ionosphere. Tro is low, troposphere. So again, the farther the region, the longer the bounce distance. But during the daytime, the D layer can absorb some of the signals. So you may not get through to uh, the higher uh, regions of the atmosphere. And that D section uh, is where AM radio stations bounce at night, but not during the day. Now we have a thing called skip zone. So we have our signal, we're bouncing it off the atmosphere and it lands a thousand kilometers away. So the, what about the area between? It gets nothing. That's known as the skip zone because of the bounce it's not receiving. And that skip zone will be affected by the angle from our ground transmission. So if we have a lower angle, that is an angle closer to the ground, that means we're pointing farther, so the bounce goes farther. So when we talked about bouncing off the uh, F1 and F2 zones, being able to achieve 4,000 kilometers, we can do less by orienting our antenna, say, towards a higher area and uh, to have a smaller skip zone. There's a thing called phase distortion. And phase distortion is affected by the bandwidth of our signal. So you'll remember that CW or Morse were good with just uh, 500 hertz of bandwidth. Uh, then we get, uh, you know, our voice in FM where we might need uh, 3 kilohertz and we need some separation as well. So the less bandwidth we use, the less we're affected by phase distortion. And phase distortion is caused by the ionospheric area being uneven. So if we're using higher bandwidth, we're spreading the signal out and we're more affected by the unevenness. So CW, SSB that use the least bandwidth, they'll be the least affected. Now, atmospherics can be lumpy, so those regions are not always even. 
Uh, the signal can change and bounce differently. This is referred to as phase change. And it causes signals to fade. So fade causes phase change. We also get ionospheric storms caused by solar flares and sunspots. And uh, a drop in signal due to ionospheric storms is also called fade. Uh, we can get sporadic changes in ionization. And those, some of those changes can even affect the polarization of the signal. Uh, if you remember, we talked about a vertical antenna. What's coming off it is vertically polarized. A horizontal antenna, it's horizontally polarized. And that can be shifted by sporadic changes in the ionosphere. Then we get solar flux and radiation. So it's not just particles emitted from the sun. The sun also emits radio waves, and that's called a solar flux. It's also called solar radiation or uh, electromagnetic radiation. And it can vary uh, in its effect based on frequency and other factors. And this is documented as solar flux index. There are websites that track this stuff. And solar flux, the electromagnetic part of the, the solar waves, will affect all communications that depend on the that depend on the ionosphere. Uh, now line of sight and ground waves, so that's the close stuff, remember like FM that'll go 100 to 200 kilometers, that's usually unaffected. But severe solar storms can blow out everything, even power lines. Uh, about 20 years ago, most of Quebec's power grid was taken down by a severe solar storm. Some additional random solar facts to remember. The sunspot cycle is 11 years, so just remember that for the test. Uh, HF that uses ionosphere will follow the same cycle, uh, but the difference isn't that huge. But again, um, you know, the people who really go for DX are trying to get maximum distance out of lowest power, and so they track this stuff. It affects them. There's a critical frequency, and that's the one that will bounce best off the ionosphere for the given time and conditions. Other frequencies might just pass through. Then more solar activity also generates more charged particles. So the ionosphere will be more charged and higher frequency signals than what we normally will get to bounce might also bounce as well. So we tell you all that, but what's the practical side of it? Well, generally, what frequencies are good at day and night? Well, 20 meters pretty good any time. So that's, uh, again, the speed of light, 300 million meters per second over uh, 20 meters. That means about 15 megahertz. So think 20 for 24 hours a day for the test. At the nighttime, frequencies lower than 20 meter when the sun is low. Daytime frequencies higher than 20 meters when the sun is high. Then we have a lower layer of the atmosphere called the troposphere. Our VHF, UHF range, you know, in the 2 meter range, it can get additional distance through troposphere bending. And so normally we talk about UHF, VHF being good for 100 kilometers. From tropospheric bending, it can get to 200 kilometers. And then there's an atmospheric effect called tropospheric ducting that can occasionally stretch our transmission to 800 kilometers or more. Sort of like a wormhole in space, except it's a duct in the air. And it's generally a result of temperature inversions creating just the right conditions. You know, a massive alternation of air, uh, alteration of air density and humidity. Then we've got a condition called scatter that affects our HF, our lower frequencies. So it comes from local inconsistent conditions. So local weather disturbances can cause a small part of the transmission to be bounced back down in really odd ways. Okay. And uh, in the ionosphere and troposphere, 
that can happen. It can also happen during meteor showers. So when meteor showers are coming, like when the Leonids happen once a year, um, ham operators will try and bounce signals off the meteor showers. Okay? Uh, now, meteors have the best effect on six meters. So six meters is the band for that, if you're trying to do that bounce uh, once or twice a year when we have those storms. Now, the, it's pretty erratic. The signals are usually distorted and pretty weak because only part of the signal gets through. But some people get a kick out of that. And uh, it's the only way you'll receive signals in the skip zone. So you're transmitting. You're expecting to get a 2,000 kilometer bounce. And all of a sudden, people in the middle are receiving the signal. And that's because of that scatter or uh, meteors uh, in the ionosphere or troposphere. So that's a lot. Let's jump to quiz 18. Uh, the links are in the comments section below. It's a little more difficult section. Go for 85 to 90 percent on this one. Again, we're YLab. You can find us at https colon slash slash ylab.ca. Uh, leave a comment and maybe we'll get around to reviewing them and posting them.